Want to make the most of your Dropbox? We've got some tips and tricks for you today on Lab Rats. This episode of Lab Rats is brought to you by Gamefly. Hello and welcome to another edition of Lab Rats. My name is Andy Walker. I'm Sean Carruthers. And this is a show where we demystify technology, gadgets, uh, the online world as well, and uh, tools therein. Yes, and stuff for the cloud. Oh, the cloud. We're going to do some cloud stuff today? We are going to do the cloud today. All right. So, we're so gonna... what's the big tool? Well, we're going to take a look at Dropbox, which is one of the most popular cloud storage uh, things that's out there right now. It's a service that people can drop their files into, sync them between the computers. There are a few others out there. Google Drive just came out uh, recently, and we're going to talk more about that in an upcoming episode. Right. But Dropbox is one of the most popular ones that's out there, and there are a few tips and tricks that we're going to show for people because there are things that people don't know that they can do with Dropbox, and we just want to sort of let people know what those things are. Well, there you go. It's a, a cloud tool. Cloud's hot these days. We had an episode on the cloud demystified recently, and it was a big, big, big traffic to that. So, so we're going to do more cloud stuff, of course. Yay. All right, well, let's get on with it. This episode is brought to you by Gamefly. Gamefly is the largest online video game rental service and offers you a choice of over 7,000 new and classic titles across all consoles and handhelds. The plans starting at $15.95 a month, Gamefly members can rent one to four games at a time and keep them for as long as they like. And there are no late fees, no due dates, and shipping is always free. Once you're done playing a game, ship it back and Gamefly will send you the next available game on your list. And if you really like the game you're playing, simply click Keep It on the Gamefly website and the game is yours at a discounted price. Gamefly will even mail you the case and manuals for free. And LabRats fans get a free 15-day trial. And if you want to take advantage of that, visit Gamefly.com slash LabRats. Great. All right, so Dropbox. This is an amazing tool. I've been using it a whole lot lately. Yes, as have I. A lot of people have been using it for personal reasons to sync on their own computers and for business reasons too. So it's, it's not just for one or the other. I think a lot of people have been using it for a lot of different reasons just like you and me. Exactly, so, uh, so, let, well, so let's talk about the mechanics of it. So it is a, uh, it's a virtual folder yes. that sits in the cloud. Now the cloud, of course, is the internet, right? So it's on a server out there somewhere, we don't know where. But it doesn't really matter because what happens is when you place files out there into your Dropbox in the cloud, it, not only does it make it something available on your local computer in an actual folder, either on your Mac or your PC, but if somebody else is subscribed to that same folder, it copies it from the cloud to their local folder as well. Right. So one of the, the main reasons why people would use this is they have a computer at work, they have a computer at home, or they have two or three different computers in the house and they want to make sure that all these computers have the same set of files. Right. So for example, you're at work and you're working on something, you want to be able to work on it at home, but you don't want to lug a computer home, you just dump it in your Dropbox and it'll automatically sync to your machine at home. Right. Or vice versa, you have like a photograph, you want to get it onto another machine, like maybe your, your mother's machine or your wife's machine who might be in a different place, you just put it in the Dropbox, there it is. And this is really good for sharing amongst teams too. Yes. I know at Cyberwalker Media, you know, my partner David Furlong and I, we, uh, we put all of our company documents, you know, all of our assets, all of our proposals, things like that, you know, and we do the monetization strategies. And you know, he works out of his, his uh, space and I work out of my space, but we have this common folder structure for all of our content. Right. And, and you don't actually, there's a couple different levels of Dropbox that you can get. You can do the individual user for free and you get a couple gigabytes of storage. And you can actually do something for Teams which actually allows you to have different users and a lot more space and a lot more power. But you can actually share folders uh, between two individual Dropbox users as well. And we're going to show you how to do that as right. well. So, but yeah, it's, it's really, really powerful and it's really changed the way a lot of people have worked. Cool. So do you want to show us? Yeah. So the first thing let's uh, talk about is what you've undoubtedly done with David and what I've done with you now for LabRats is sharing a folder. So when you log into dropbox.com, that's where you sign up for it. Uh, you can download the app and then install it on your computer. And then once you've done that and set up an account, then you can start putting things in here. And you see I've got a bunch of things, folders and individual files. Um, now we want to share one of these folders so uh, that uh, other people can look at it. So. Mm -hmm. For example, uh, scripts. These are, these are some old scripts that I had, I've worked on before. Right now you can just see it says folder down here, but I want to share this. So I'm going to invite to folder and I'm going to invite collaborators and I'm going to say Andy at labrats.tv and I'll hit share folder. 
So now if you have an account at Andy at LibRest.tv, you'll get the email and you can go in and accept that invite and then that folder will appear inside your Dropbox as right. well and now, then you can work with the files. Now it's important to mention though here at this point that the email address used to sign up with your Dropbox is the email address that needs to be shared to. Yeah. So I have several email addresses and in fact you sent the invitation to one that's not affiliated with my Dropbox and so I, I, could, I could open a new account but then it has to shut, you know, reconfigure my whole system. Right. So you want to share it with yeah. the email address that you sign up with and, right. and sometimes that's not that obvious. It, it's, it's not necessarily the one you're emailing somebody at. Right. So if you want to share a folder, find out what that address is. Okay, good. So anyways, now you'll go in and see this, that it says that it is uh, a shared folder. You click on it again and it says shared folder options at the top. And you'll see, you can invite more. Uh, so I'll invite Mike, who is uh, our producer. And uh, he's at Tiger Company Cyberwalker, so I'll share that with him as well. And again, might not be the address that he's used. I'm just tapping in things here. Uh, so also shared folder options, we go back to that. So we see that there's one member, that's me, because I've shared it. But we'll also see the people that I've invited here. So. Still waiting uh, to accept because you're sitting here and not uh, accepting my offer. So, um, over here on Lab Rats, which I've already shared, these are the the, the things that we're working on. We'll go back to there, click on it, and, and you can click through by clicking on it. But if you click on the bar anywhere, that'll highlight the items in your Dropbox. But if, if you uh, highlight on a section that's not actually configured with text or something like that, so then you can work with it using the stuff at the top of the bar. So again, shared folder options, three members here. We've got, uh, you are, have already accepted this and uh, Mike is uh, waiting for that. So I'm going to actually uninvite you from this. I can kick you out. Hey, or it's I can kick make out. You it's got a kick out feature. I kick you out or It's like I unfriending. It's like all the hostile right. internet lingo. going on. I'm going to unfriend you. I'm going to kick you out of Dropbox. Right. And if I want to just unshare the folder and just keep it for myself, I can hit unshare folder as well. Right. And, uh, and then I, I can make it clear here whether or not I want other people that have already been part of the folder to keep those files. So right. I can remove those files from your Dropbox when I unshare it. So right. Right. that's the one thing. So you can share it and then unshare when you don't want them to have access to that anymore. Okay, cool. Now it's worth noting that whatever goes into that folder now will eat up a portion of my Dropbox and your Dropbox as well. Right, there's an so, allocation that starts to shrink over time. Right, so if I throw like a gigabyte of files into there, then it'll take a gigabyte of files out of your Dropbox as well, because you're sharing it. it there, so. Right, I got it, right, okay, good. Right. Now what about this, uh, uh, what if you delete something? Can you recover a file? You can, in fact, recover a file. So a lot of uh, people have, uh, like, deleted something from their Dropbox, or they have uh, saved over a file. And, and one of the, the key reasons why people would do this is when you do get uh, Dropbox running and install the app on your computer, you actually get in your sidebar, whether it's in uh, Windows or, or Macintosh, you have an option for Dropbox. And it treats it just like a drive on your yeah. system. So you can drag and drop things. You don't have to do this all through the web interface. Right. It's like a local, it's like a local drive. Right. right. So you don't have to use the, the web interface, drag and drop, and that sort of thing. It's just you're dealing with folders on your desktop. Right. Yeah. And now, now the one interesting thing about Dropbox that I found is that when you have a file on here and you want to drag it over to your computer to work on it there, say let's getting started PDF, which is the Dropbox thing, I can just drag it over to my desktop like this. But one thing you'll notice is it disappeared from my Dropbox uh -huh. altogether. Uh -huh. So if we're sharing this folder and I take a bunch of things off to my computer and just drag and drop them, then they're gone for everybody. Oh, so right. that's unfortunate. But you can get stuff like that back over on the web interface by going to your main folder or the folder where those files were located yeah. and clicking on show deleted files. Oh, neat. And then you'll see right here, getting started, PDF shows up and it's grayed out. So I can get that back by clicking on it. You can see previous versions or I can click restore to get that back. Right. Right. Now, the previous version is really useful, too, because, of course, you're having version control here, mm -hmm. right? So if I pull up a file, I make an edit, and then you pull up the, the same file, and you make an edit, we have different versions, obviously, going on. Right. And if I overwrite it by mistake on top of your brand new, you know, inspiration, right. then at least we can go back, uh, you know, into a previous version in Dropbox right. and right. actually do recover that version. So just as an example right here, you can see, how do I use Boxy? And if I open this up here, and you'll see, oh, this is the wrong version of the file. Oops, I broke it. This is just temporary text that I've thrown in, but it could be anything. You could have just saved over it with like nothing, deleted a whole pile of crap, right. and now your file is gone. And if you're, again, if you're sharing this with everyone uh, and you've messed it up, then oops, you've sort of done a real bad thing. Yeah, but if, if the report for that big customer you've got, you're in trouble. Yeah. 
So again, you can go back into Dropbox here on the, uh, the web, highlight that particular document which has versions here that uh, you've obviously wrecked, click more and go to previous versions and it will uh, bring up a dialog box that shows all of the other things that have been on this particular. Very good. So okay. yeah, you can go back to the previous versions. Now you can get a link to a file too, right? Yeah, you can get a link to a file. And so we, we talked about sharing entire folders. So if I want to share with you and with my co-producer, we can continue to collaborate. But sometimes you just want to send a specific file to a client, yeah. but you don't want to share a folder with them or invite them into your life. Yeah. Um, well, you don't even have to do this from the web interface. You can, but again, if you are using this on your, uh, on your Mac or PC, in integrated right in here, you can actually just right-click any of these things. So let's share this other one. Go down to Dropbox. There's a uh, Dropbox in the, the menu that uh, flies up, and you can type Get Link. Hmm. Once you click on Get Link, it'll open it up in a web browser, and it'll actually have a link at the top right over here. And then I can copy this, send it to you, and then you can open up whether you have Dropbox or not. Oh, neat. So it's right. like a virtual, uh, it has like a word processor type thing or an Excel type of emulator, things like that. Yeah, so you can see what it is in the case of a file like this, but it also has a download option up top here. So you can pull it down. So that you can download. So if it doesn't view on, on your screen here, then at least you can download the file. Right. And uh, you notice in the uh, URL up top, it isn't something that's obviously identifying my account. It's not identifying this, so you can't reverse hack it so that uh, you can get at my other files. Right, right, right. So, so that's the desktop, you know, so that, I mean, obviously Mac supported, Windows is supported. Mm -hmm. Is there a Linux support? There must be a Linux support, maybe. Yeah, there's, there's a support for other systems, other, other as, systems well. as well. But what about mobile? Mobile as well. So this is, uh, this is key. So I've got uh, a uh, version of it running right here on, uh, on the Android. So you have uh, access to all of the things that are here. Mm -hmm. um, all of the files that you put in there, again, you can... Uh, you can click through and see what they what all these things are. I'm gonna click through and see this. It'll open it up uh, in you know one of the programs that's compatible with it. Now the one thing that's really worth remembering here is that not all of the things that you have in your Dropbox are going to be compatible with your mobile devices. So you might have iOS. So uh, you can run this on your iPhone or your iPad as well. But when you open that particular file, it might not open in exactly the app you're thinking of or it might have, not have the ability to save back into Dropbox. So you will have it there and you can work on it, but sometimes you can't actually put it back into Dropbox in exactly the same way because you're not working right. in that same way. Yeah, I got that. So in, in the case of mobile, it really is... Um, it's a pull thing, not a push thing. It's, it's, if you consider it a pull thing only, in some cases you can push it back, but don't count on it in all cases, and, and then you'll be fine. It's just so, so could you push like a photograph from your iPhone, for example, to a Dropbox folder? Uh, I, I know you can certainly do that on, on Android. Yeah. It, when you fire up a Dropbox for the first time on Android, it'll give you the option of looking for all the photos that are on your system and automatically uploading them to your right. Dropbox. Right. So there, there are things that you can actually push into Dropbox. Um, the one nice thing about the Android operating system is it does tend to take a lot of these cloud storage systems and then bolt them into the back end so that when you share something, you can share it directly into the Dropbox. Yeah, right. iPhone, not so much. There's uh, a number of things inside iOS that it doesn't make it so easy to integrate that in. I got it. So. Cool. Okay, awesome. And then um, there's universal access to apps. So you, I know you put a note in, in the show notes around that, what, uh, and you're talking about password managers. So a tip there? Yeah, so the, the one thing that uh, it, there's password managers, but that's part of a bigger uh, idea where you can actually take something. So say you're using a program on multiple different machines. So you're using it at work, you're using it at home, you've got a gaming machine downstairs. So if you install Dropbox and all of those, you can set something in your preferences to point to your Dropbox on all of those machines, and then it'll share that information. So it's not going to work with every single thing you use because uh, some things are a little bit picky about that. But for uh, example, there are some programs like 1Password which actually actively encourage you to use Dropbox. So 1Password is a, a password manager that allows you to remember all your passwords just using one master password. And then you can push those things in uh, to, say, your web browser or save your software keys, all, all of those sorts of things. But if you want to set it up on multiple machines, it's a bit of a pain in the butt because you have to keep doing it over and over again. Or you can copy the files over from one machine to another, but then if you make a change on one, then it's a huge problem. By putting your key file inside Dropbox, then it actually pulls it from Dropbox, adjusts it, pushes it back, so that all of the other machines, when they're pulling it from Dropbox, they got all the latest revisions every time they launch. Very so, cool. 
So and yeah, like I said, one password is is one it's really a good little key like, way of doing that. Like super extreme tip there. Yeah, yeah, good stuff. And and you should you can play with that to see if there are other things that you want to do, like a game, for example, that you want to run on several machines. You can try seeing if that works with Dropbox. That might be a little bit slower, of course. So I got it's, it. It's not perfect, but it but it's something to try. It's kind of cool. So don't forget, if you want to find out more about Dropbox, zip on over to dropbox.com, uh, and uh, it's free. It is free. Uh, and if you actually send, bring your friends into it, then they actually give you more storage. You give a free gig as you start to invite yeah. people into your community. Yeah, up to eight gigs, I think. So there's, there's a, a number of different ways that you can get free storage on, on top of what you uh, get for free. And then from there, it's tiered up um, you know, in terms of your cost. So I think yeah. it's the first tier is like $100 or $50 or $100 or whatever uh, in terms yeah. of the annual cost if you want to add storage, uh, paid storage. Yeah, yeah. So, you can get it for free, but you can also pay if you're a business user and really need a lot of storage or working with video or something like that. So, yeah. Cool. And uh, I guess that's it for us. Um, if you want to email us, you have an idea for a, 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 an episode that you want us to do, you have a question, something like that, you can email us at? Uh, don't worry about the email address. Just take the email and send it into our Dropbox. We'll get it. At LiveRest.tv. Right. And uh, if you uh, want to use le less keyboard wear and tear, you could use the email address. Yeah, or if you actually want it to work. <laughs> you want it to work. Feedback at labrats.tv. Right, good. So thanks for tuning in this week. You know, it'd be foolish for us to be here showing you Dropbox if you were now there going, how do I share my really big pictures of my fluffy dog with my friends? Well, my name is Andy Walker. I'm Sean Carruthers. And we'll see you next time. Are you ready?